Hi there, everyone. It's Ifti from Extreme Returns. So I'm on the eToro platform. I joined uh, a few months ago, although my Extreme Returns account only opened up very recently. Um, as you can see, this is my portfolio. One of the shares that we'll be talking about today is Square. If I can find you. There we go, Square. So Square is a very interesting company for a number of reasons. Let's go on to Stockopedia, great resource. Uh, I recommend everybody to go on there. So by background, I'm a chartered, a chartered management accountant. I qualified way back in 1995, which shows my age. <laughs> I've worked for big companies, set up successful um, companies in my own right as well as an entrepreneur. So let's look at Square Inc. Uh, let's go down to the description. And we can see here, Square Inc. is a commerce ecosystem. That's not a very good description. The company enables its sellers start to start, run and grow their own businesses. It combines software with hardware to enable sellers to turn mobile device, devices and computing devices into payments and point of sale solutions. That's a terrible description. OK, let me try. Square is a fintech, financial tech company. It was set up by a chap called Jack Dorsey, who also co-founded um, Twitter. Now, Jack Dorsey's friend came to him one day and said, um, I'm running a small business and can't for the life of me get one of these big companies to help me. So they, so they sat down and they basically discovered that everything that you needed was on your mobile in order to accept payments for small businesses. All they needed was something to enable that process to happen. And it's a very small square uh, chip, if you like, uh, block. It just, it's just uh, it's difficult to describe, but it's a square. <laughs> so they set up Square many years ago. Uh, they're based in... Uh, of the US, obviously. And uh, they're based in uh, San Mateo. They do have offices in, oh, there you go, San Francisco. Very uh, Same as Twitter, really. So Jack Dorsey runs both. Now, as usual, let's go over the financial metrics. It's an 81 billion pound company by market cap. Um, the quality level is 71 and the quality metrics that we look at, again, usual kind of things, return on capital employed means how well they're investing their capital in order to create more money. Um, operating margin, and you can see because it's green, it's good. Although we've seen better return on capital employed. And one of the reasons for such a low return on capital employed at the moment is simply because they are, have been making losses up to now, and we'll come on to that. Operating margin is just 4.2%. That's not very good. So um, if you look at revenue, now this is important. Uh, this is one of the quality metrics we use. Uh, in 2014, it was 850 million, went up to 1.2 billion, 1.7, 2.2, 3.3, 4.7. The last 12 months analysts, uh, sorry, last 12 months, uh, updates so it shows 7.6 so it's nearly doubled and this is one of the companies that's doing really well in spite of the pandemic and if you look at the uh, CAGR which means compound annual growth rate it's for nearly 41 percent which is amazing for a company of this size to be hitting 40 percent plus on compound annual growth rate is brilliant and you can see from the graph there it is growing very fast now Operating profit, or let's look at net profit because that's after everything really. Uh, losses in 2014, 15, 16, 17, and 18, but getting better in terms of less loss. And they made the first profit in, in 2019. This year, 
uh, the 12 month, last 12 months, 310, full year 2020 expected to be 373, which is pretty much the same as 2019. And next year, 594. So you see next year and the year after, I expect this company to be a lot more profitable. So what we saw in terms of the quality metrics will go up and also the value will hopefully catch up as well. I'll come on to that. Let's see how much cash they're holding. Um, so recently they've decided to hoard a lot more cash, which is very sensible given the world we're in at the moment, nearly $3 billion sitting in cash. And the fact that they're now profitable means that hopefully they won't have to use that cash, but they can add to it in order to expand or make acquisitions, whatever they want to do. Um, obviously they don't give a dividend. Uh, one of the most important metrics I use, uh, and I think any accountant, any analyst would look at is free cash flow free cash flow let's see how stockopedia um, define it free cash flow is a measure of the amount of free cash available to a business after it has paid its operating costs and after capital expenditure in other words how much cash have they got left in the business after all of their expenses and when you divide it per share so then it's easy to compare lots of different companies. Um, you can see that they were burning cash in 2014, 2015, 2016. That red means negative. They didn't have any cash left over there to borrow or use from the reserves in order to fund their operations. However, in 2017, they became cash flow positive, which means they're producing cash. Although if you look at the numbers, they were losing money in 2017 and 2018. That's from an accounting perspective, but more importantly, they were actually uh, cash flow positive in 2017 and 2018. In fact, they more than doubled their cash flow from one year to the next. And in 2019, it's gone up even more. You see that 0.865 uh, per share, dollar per share. So for every share that they've got, they're producing more and more cash. This last 12 months, TTM just means last 12 months trailing basis. Um, so all American companies have to give quarterly updates, take the last four, and you've got this TTM figure. It's gone down significantly. And I expect that's because a lot of their customers who are small businesses have been hurt through the pandemic. So they maybe they've been having to support them. What other things can we show you? Right, looking at uh, the value, uh, it's very, very poor. That means it's very expensive. So let's look at why that is, mainly because of share price. Uh, so pre-pandemic, these guys were, um, pre-pandemic, they were about 80. Uh, at the moment, they're 240. So they've tripled in their, <laughs> in their stock price. That's an amazing run, and that's why. So I think it's because a lot of investors are looking at um, businesses that will do well in shutdown and therefore the future. So this is very expensively priced. It has dipped. You saw that 166 then going down to 139. So they've got quite a few. It goes up, then dips again, goes up, then dips again, goes up, dips again. Then, But, but the st steady trajectory going up. If we look at their share price from the moment they listed you can see wasn't going anywhere but going up going up steadily but nothing exponential um, it's really I guess here that they started to uh, grow so fast and look at the relative strength to the market plus 19 percent over the last month three months 42 percent and one year 236 percent it is a business that a lot of investors like um, it's not far off its all-time high, it's moving average. All, all that means is you take the last 50 days of its stock price, compare it to today, and the moving average, uh, the, the, sorry, the share price today is higher. And if you take it over the last 200 days, the moving average is again very positive. This is a good company. I love this company. I think it's going to take over from um, the likes of PayPal in time. Let's look at major shareholders. So a lot of big companies, um, as you'd expect, the tracking companies, Morgan Stanley, Vanguard, BlackRock, Fidelity. I was hoping to see Jack Dorsey in here. 
but I don't, don't see him. Let's quickly Google it. Here we go. 20 million, it says 28 percent of his wealth, 20 million shares. Uh, still multi-billionaire. As of that date, he owned 24 percent. I think he's been selling off a lot of it. So that's a very brief summary on um, Square. I hope you uh, learned something from it. I've got it as part of my portfolio because a number of people in the fund industry um, that I follow speak very highly of it. Kathy Wood at ARC uh, Investment, for example, um, Bailey Gifford, James Anderson, those kind of people, they really like companies like this. So my name is Iftiuddin. I would appreciate if you could subscribe to my channel, like, share, enjoy. If you want to copy me on Extreme Returns, please do so. Uh, I would really appreciate that. And thank you very much.